Hi, so this is continuing from the first video on male and female gender roles. Um, and towards the end of the last one, I was describing how women have to take things in hand and instruct what's going to happen in their lives and in their household. They need to plan ahead because falling into the male's paradigm is not going to work for you in this generation at this time for these years. It's just not going to work. But it's they, they're not being unfair and they're not calculating to take advantage of you. They're just using their last, most used, uh, best example for them. And that was when they were growing up. But that doesn't fit now, right? Okay. So I'm going to come back to how females need to be instructing what goes on. Uh, whether it's in the domestic sphere or in their life together. The female needs to basically direct this because it's not going to work the other way. Um, okay, now talking particularly about domestic load and uh, also mental, uh, mental load, thinking about the, the things that, okay, for a female, for a woman, what is typically thought to be the, f the obligation of, or your obligations in terms of thinking about what happens in the home, uh, domestic chores, etc. Okay, I know that this part is probably quite difficult for women and girls of this generation, my generation. I'm 40 years, 40 years old now. I'm 40 years old. And so if you're with me in this generation, it's probably quite difficult for you to re, I'm going to say retrain or, or try to, um, I'm going to rebroach or broach the next system of how it's going to work to the men that you happen to be with or the men who's, the man who's your partner, who's living with you, or the man you're in a long-term partnership with. Um... Feminism is kind of an angry subject at the moment. And of course it is because it's re reacting to about, I looked on Wikipedia, like how long has patriarchy been in place? And apparently a, the average guess is that it's been in existence for about 6,000 years. Oh, so long. Right, started in about 400, no, 4,000 BC. It's a long time man, to be under the thumb. And we're just coming out of it now. So things are going to get better, but you need to take things in hand. Okay, so talking about the domestic arena, in the home, in the domestic arena, how do you get the male, how do you get your, your man, your partner, to start doing things with you or to start taking part or take equal part, to be a true partner in the home. I was just thinking now, like gay partners, gay male partners, and, well, lesbians would do that anyway, but gay, gay, you have to think of the gay male partner. And men out there, straight men, I'm talking to you too now, uh, gay male partners together living in a home together. How do you think they'd organize the home and the domestic sphere? They, you know, they'd be holding each other up to like exact 50-50s and no one person would be taking advantage of the other. So you have to think of it like that. It's not a man and a woman and their roles in a, in a relationship or in a, a setup. It's two human beings with limited energy. It's physics. Two life forms. Never mind the fact that they're male and female. Two life forms. Two human beings in a space together and they need to live and, and work and organize their energy so that not, not one more than the other is depleted at the end of the day. It's down to that basic energy dynamics and energy, con energy conservation. If you help to maintain each other's energy and uh, longevity, then you're in for the long haul. You can maintain each other, you can support each other for the long term. But if you're not considering the other one's energy and how it's being depleted at the end of the day and 
you're always a little bit up. Do you think that's sustainable? If you're a believer in science and physics, it's not going to hold true. <laughs> yes. Okay, woman, I'm going to come back to you. Domestic sphere. There's a, a lot that goes on in the home that has traditionally been left to, to women, right? Washing the dishes, cooking the evening meal, um, ironing. I don't iron. I never iron. I'm principal. So uh, laundry, dishes cooking the evening meal, taking care of children, um, those are the main things, organizing social events inside the home. Okay, now let's just say you as a woman, you're happy to do most of the, I'm going to use myself as an example, I can't stand cooking, right, I can't stand cooking and I, I, I don't want to have to be always thinking of, oh, what's going to be for the evening meal? To be honest, before I got together with my boyfriend, for my evening meal, I would never cook. I would go for fruit or I'd go for something hand-to-mouth food. The whole like a cooking episode in the kitchen with the pots and pans and the washing up. God, I've got better things. I've got other things to do with my time, my limited time in my life. Well, I'm going to live for 80 years or something and I'm going to be spending how many years of that cooking? No, no, I couldn't think of anything worse. No, really. So for myself, if it was just me on my own or me with my kid, I'd sort us out with like chopped up carrots, cucumbers, like healthy stuff that we haven't eaten in the, in the rest of the day. You know, maybe it's high carbohydrate, like cereal or toast for breakfast. Lunch is happening elsewhere, maybe school, etc. But but evening meal, if it's not not I don't know Chinese takeout or something, it's something really basic, like I don't know a loaf of bread we baked the other day, plus some fruit or nuts or or maybe vegetable items that we I don't think we had enough of during the day. You know, like salad items. I almost never cook for the evening meal so i personally i can't stand cooking i think it's a waste of time and also i in my belief i think it decreases the food value of the the produce you buy it and then you cook it and you're basically heating the life out of it you can see it going up as steam and smoke etc that's it the life's going you're smelling it that's probably why when you're cooking a lot and you're smelling all the the aromas of the food etc all the time after a while, you don't feel hungry. Well, we took it in already, right? So for me, I feel like cooking for the rest of the time. Just like ironing. Just like that. So, like, I'm, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be cooking big meals. And I think my boyfriend, he's come, a, come from a family where there was always an evening meal. It was always planned and prepared by someone else. and Or maybe in a previous relationship, he would do it sometimes and the, and the other uh, the other girlfriend would do it another time, ex-girlfriend would do it another time, and then they take turns washing up. But for me, I'm just like, no, I'm not cooking. I'm, I'm okay to do washing up, but I'm not cooking. But I've noticed that he doesn't really like cooking either. He doesn't want to do it. Often, in the early days with us, he, he'd come home and he'd go, so what are we going to do for dinner? What are we going to do for dinner? I'll be like, I don't know. Um... I think there's some stuff in the fridge, you know, like leftovers. Oh, I'm going to have leftovers. I don't know about you. I mean, there's leftovers enough for both of us, but I know, I know him. He wants a hot meal, etc. He's expecting, now listen well here. He's expecting a hot meal. He's expecting a certain division of uh, vegetables and meat and maybe a potato thing. That's per the old generation. You've just heard the way I feel about evening meal food. Now, what do we do? The two of us, we have these vastly different ideas. How do we continue from this point? What do you do when your boyfriend or your husband's expecting a certain production and you're expecting a totally different one? What do we do? Okay, one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever been given in my whole life is that not making a decision is also a decision. Not doing anything, 
not putting forward any action is also a plan of action. Okay? Basically, maybe the traditional woman thinks, well, so what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to solve this problem. Hold up. It's not your problem to solve. It's not your problem to solve. Just continue doing as you've always done. You don't have to. Maybe you, you're thinking, oh, it's my obligation. Um, the household, da da da. Now, what are we going to do? Um, you're thinking for him and you now. You're thinking for him and you, how are we going to solve this dinner problem? What would happen if you just sat back and did nothing? What would happen? If you just sat back and let's just say you started to get hungry around dinner time. He's waiting around expecting an evening meal. But you know you'd be perfectly happy with an apple and a and some peanut butter on toast. Like that actually sounds quite good to me. Pe apple and peanut butter on toast. This is what I did. I'm thinking apple and peanut butter on toast. Um, when he goes, oh, so what are we going to do for dinner? I'd be like, well, um, there's some apples over there. And I think I'll probably make some peanut butter on a toast in a bit. Would you like to have some with me? I'll double up. Now, I know that's not the dinner he wants. But that's too bad. Because we're equal partners in this setup. Him expecting me to get up and start making a meal to his requirements, that's now service. In my mind, that's in the realm of being a servant. But he is 30, 37 years old. He's managed to live by himself as a bachelor for many years. He's fended for himself up until now. He's made all his own decisions. And he managed to feed himself every single night. But now the task of his evening meal is lying to me? Really? No, that's not how it's going to go. So, remember, a course of action can also be in action. You do not have to fight patriarchy. Forget about fighting patriarchy. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It can't hold you back anymore. No, I'm serious. Like, if, if there's ever an instance of this, like, um, okay, what are we going to do for dinner? You can say, or well, like I said, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'm going to have an apple and peanut butter. Uh, there's enough for both of us. Would you like me to, I can cut, I can put the toast in for you as well. But I know like most, every time I say this for a setup of what I'm going to eat, I know he doesn't want that. I know he wants a cooked meal with some meat or chicken and some steamed vegetables or something. But that's his problem. That's his expectation. If he wants that, he can produce it. He can produce it. It's not up to me. It's not my obligation. That was of the housewives in the last generation. That's not us in this one. If wait, if, if you are a housewife in this generation, yes, that's probably your obligation because you're running the home and cooking the evening meal is part of your part of your set of duties because you don't work. He pays for everything that you do and everything you have. Fine, okay, but. If you are like the average woman or female in this current generation in 2020, you're wanting to work, you're wanting to bring home your own bread, bacon, money. So this now means it's a totally different paradigm. If you are with a male in a, in a relationship, it's a partnership and he's working. If you're both working, it's a partnership. It can't be any other way. It's not going to work. So when they lay out an expectation or you can feel in the air that there's an air of expectation. Sit back and relax. You don't need to sit up and start to think of how do we solve this. No, 
He's quite smart. He has a perfectly good brain. That's why you got together with him. Let him think of how to solve it. It's not up to you. You can release it. This generation is about releasing that. Start to practice it. You, 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 these days, we, we need to do less, not more. Don't need to be working more, fighting more. I think in our, our current paradigm, people are always using this word. You need to fight, fight terrorism, fight this, fight patriarchy, fight... No, you don't need to fight it. You just need to drop it. Just drop it. Just leave it. Just like ignore it. Like any time they're expecting or requiring something of you, you, you don't even have to have a response. You just go, oh, mm -mm. Shrug your shoulders like they often do. Just eh, let it go. So now my boyfriend, he doesn't expect, he's given up expecting anything from me from the kitchen. Because I've even said to him, mate, I hate cooking. And I'm not going to be cooking for myself. I'm just going to rustle something up real quick. Sometimes I even skip eating in the evening because I'm not hungry. And then he sorts out his own meal. Maybe it's baked beans on toast or maybe it's oats or maybe he goes out and pick, goes out and picks something up. Sometimes we, me and my daughter, we meet him out for dinner somewhere. So it's uncharted. This is uncharted land. It's uncharted territory. But know that there's more than one way of dealing with this. And you don't always have to be high action, high mental load. You can start to rest now. But let it be their thing. You know, if there's a there's an issue, a domestic issue. We've been thinking of these domestic issues for like for thousands of years. And now we're partners in the workplace. Let them think of some of it. Another thing that I, I learned when I was growing up, um, my mum, and I think probably your mum too, most females of the older generation, and even this generation now, have very high expectations of what's supposed to be happening in the home or what a home is supposed to look like, right? Like let's just say there's a pile of laundry or clean laundry. It's just been pulled off the, the washing line or it's just been pulled in. It's just been dry. There's a pile of clean laundry. Most people, most women's expectation of that is, oh, it needs to be separated. You know, whose who's laundry is whose? Uh, it needs to be folded. And put away and men also know men of that generation and many often in this one also know that women have this expectation and so they'll just allow you to do it they'll allow you to do it and your own adherence to perfection is your own worst enemy your adherence to your own idea of perfection is your worst enemy. It's going to hold you back. You see that pile of clean laundry. You know that he could do some of it. You'd like him to. But you don't have to ask him because, what, every, everything that happens in the house, you need to ask him to do it? He can't just think on his own, oh, this needs to be done. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Why not? Why do we always need to ask? We're not the managers of the house anymore. We're equal partners. They need to do it too. So when you see that pile of clean laundry, many of us will think, oh, can't just leave that like that. Can't just leave that like that. Who's watching? Who's watching? Do you have government TV in your house, people judging your house, like Dame Edna's Neighborhood Watch coming in and inspecting everything? Do you have that? No. You don't. No one's watching you. In fact, the person who's most judgmental in your house about this domestic checklist is yourself. Remember that. So you see the clean laundry there and you think he could do it. He could do some of it. I'd like him to. Mm. And then you start to do some of it and you wind up doing all of it because you say to yourself, I'll just do it because... I'll do it right anyway, and I'll take it to all the places where I want it to be in the house. Okay, get ready to be a housewife.
If you keep doing that over time, everybody in your house is going to get read, used to that pattern of way of doing things because you've accepted it, everybody else accepts it, has accepted it, and that's going to be your role. That's going to be what you do every time. But you're going to get annoyed with that because each and every time you're going, this should be helping me. And then you get mad. This is what my mum used to do. She used to get so mad because she used to get so mad because we weren't doing things. But then if we did do things, she would say we were doing it a bit wrong and we should do it like this or oh, she'll just take care of it anyway. That was, that was the mistake there. You need to get, you, you need to throw away your idea of domestic perfection if you're going to get this, okay? The other members of your household, the husband or the boyfriend and the children, they need to get used to the idea that they are partners in this. You are not the head, you're not the manager, and you're not like the, the baseline default go-to person for this. They need to take care of things too. And you know how you do this? You don't tell them to do it. Well, you can tell them to do it or tell them to do it, but then be quiet. And you don't want to be saying it more than once. Say it one time. Do your bit. Maybe take out, it sounds selfish, take out your clothes. Because think about it, is it that selfish if, if that is what they would do, right? If your husband or your child came to the pile of technology and they needed something from it, they wouldn't fold up your clothes. They just look for theirs, right? So you need to do the same. See the pile of clean laundry. Okay. Hi, guys. I'd like us all to take care of this, fold it up, put it away in our different rooms. Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. Maybe they go back to them. Yes, I'll do it later. I'll do it just now. Fine. Okay, you've asked already. Now be quiet. Don't ask again. Forget about going back to that. Go into the pile. Pull out your things. Pull out your things, fold them up, and put them in your drawers and your cupboards. Okay, you've done your bit. And then you walk away and go and do your thing. Go and read your book, go get a glass of water, glass of wine, go do your thing, whatever it was you were going to do. They are going to come through at some or other point and go, oh, that pile of clean laundry is still there. And then they're going to remember all by themselves the fact that you asked them to do something about that. They might notice that none of your stuff's there. It's just going to have to be up to them to start now. Okay, and now this is what you do with everything else. You're all equal members in the household. Everybody must pull their weight and do their part. And what you can do is you can draw up a, a chore wheel or expected duties, but maybe you just want the, uh, the, the spirit of initiative. You want to initiate the spirit of initiative. That's what my mom wanted, basically. She wanted the spirit of initiative, which means that you see something that needs to be done and then you just take care of it. And then everyone in the whole house just does that, just to help each other. She wanted that. But then she also shot herself in the foot a bit by expecting perfection each time we did that thing. And then she just said, oh, no, never mind. I'll, you know, it, it needs to be done this other way, not that way. So, yeah, after a while, you know, we just think, okay, I can't do anything unless I ask her. But then she didn't want us to ask her. She just wanted us to go ahead and take care of her just the way she would. So this is going to be a difficult era. This is going to be a difficult area and era for a while. There's going, it's, it's not going to be easy. But that domestic arena, think of less action, not more. It's down tools for this. You need to start taking care of what do you want your life to really be about? What do you, what do you in your day, what actions do you think are really going to make a big difference to your family and to the outcome of humanity. What do you want your, your contribution and your input to be? And then think of, well, in my average day, what am I really putting my energy into? Am I just cleaning up after everybody? 
they could be doing that themselves and they could be learning self-sufficiency as well. Less, not more. Remember that.